So you just got a gig booked for the first time at this really cool venue. It's an awesome place. You've been wanting to play here and you find out, hey, they have their own sound system. So you're probably thinking, well, that's a lot less gear I have to bring and set up and all that. And you'd be right in thinking that. However, in this video, I want to show you the minimal gear that you need to bring even if the venue has their own sound system. Real quick before we get started, if you just stumbled on my channel for the first time because you were searching for tips on playing live acoustic gigs or solo gigs, welcome by the way. And I truly hope that you get some value out of this. I truly believe that the few tips that I share with you here are going to save you a lot of time and potential frustration. So thank you again and welcome to my channel. Make sure you give this a like and hey, go ahead and subscribe because I've got more content like this already out there and I've got more coming your way. Now, another note to my long time subscribers. Thank you so much, by the way. You guys are used to rock and metal guitar videos. I'm always going to put those out for you. Uh, but as some of you know, and maybe some of you don't, about a year and a half ago, and we'll, we'll get to the tips here, but about a year and a half ago, I started playing these live solo gigs, mainly acoustic gigs, uh, just out at wineries and breweries and places like that. And I never imagined I'd be playing out as much as I am right now. I'm very grateful for that, by the way, but I'm playing out like it, pretty much every week, sometimes twice a week. So again, uh, it's been a really cool journey and I want to share this journey with you. Uh, I know some of you don't play live and, and even if you have no intention in playing live and getting up there on stage, I do. I challenge you to start playing in front of people, even if, if, if it's in front of friends or family or going to open mic or something like that. Uh, you build a completely different skill set in doing so, and it just it helps your music skills increase as well. All that just kind of works together. All right, so that's my little pep talk to you if you don't play live, but let's get into these tips. So just a few days before filming this video, I was playing at a venue for the very first time. A very awesome place, by the way. It's this, it's this really cool place called The Blind Goat, and it's in the South Tampa area. Uh, this place is awesome. I mean, they have a full bar and they have awesome, awesome food. So that's a huge plus for me. <laughs> I really enjoy playing there. Uh, but anyway, so they have their own sound system already set up. I mean, it's set up to the point where you literally, if you're just a solo acoustic player, you can just go plug into their little board, turn the power button on, and you're jamming. It's even, it's even set up so cool to where when you stop playing, their house music will come on. When you start playing, it'll automatically like wind down and shut off. So it's really set up for convenience and you can just go plug in and play. However, when you're in that situation, and even if it doesn't have all the bells and whistles like this one does, there's still a list of gear that I want you guys to consider bringing. Actually, I want you to just go ahead and bring it. And first of all, let, let me kind of walk you through what this place has, okay? We walk in the door and you can see there are speakers set up all over the place. So right now, right now you see the patio out here, the outside patio. There's speakers all over the place here. Now we walk inside. You know, there's a speaker at the front door all around that bar section. This place has all kinds of like little sections everywhere. Uh, we walk over here around the bar. There's speakers all the way around the bar. There's another back room over there. So the speakers are all over the place. So the cool thing about this is everybody's going to hear you pretty clearly. Now, the bad thing about that is you better not screw up because they're going to hear that screw up as well. <laughs> but anyway, so they've got a, a really pristine setup. Now, we walk over to the board. They've got this little board though, and you just plug in and start playing. So it's really set up. Let's start talking about the list of items that you need to bring with you. Uh, first and foremost, I believe you always need your own mic, mic cable, and mic stand. Now this venue, and I don't know if they have one or not, but it, it, there wasn't one on the floor when I went there. Uh, so I always assume there are no mic stands. I play at a couple other places that have their own sound system. The one place uh, doesn't have one, the other place does. Uh, I like to use my own mic stand. I mean, you know, there's no harm in using their mic stand if it's available, but always, always, always bring your own mic stand. Obviously bring your own mic. You don't want to be seeing in somebody else's mic. I mean, that's just, you know, 
Uh, yeah, just bring your own mic. <laughs> you already know this. Bring your own mic cable, and of course, bring a backup mic cable as well. I like to have backups for everything, guys. Uh, now, if, I, if I'm running like you know five or six different XLR cables for whatever, some are going to monitors and mics. Maybe I have just one spare, but I always, always, always bring a backup. Okay, I even have a backup mic as well. Now, this next piece of equipment, I'm always going to bring it, even if they have their own sound system. And there's two reasons why. First of all, uh, that is your own soundboard. I strongly recommend that you bring your own soundboard to these gigs even if they have their own PA and own equipment, all that stuff. Two reasons for this. Number one, you're always going to be more familiar with the equipment that you use, okay? You're, you're going to be familiar with your board. Uh, there's another place that I play at that has their own sound setup and their uh, is kind of strange because they have, well, this is not strange, this is just like modern technology, but they have the mixer on the iPad. Well, I've never used one of those before, so that would take me a little while to sit down, and I know it's not like rocket science or anything, but again, going back to, I'm very familiar with my board and where I need my settings at and so forth, so I would much rather use my board than someone else's board. Now, sometimes you might come across a venue that they have their own sound system, but there really is no board per se, it's just you just plug in, kind of like this one, and I don't know if they had an iPad or not, or a digital mixer, but you can see the little board here, the minimal inputs, and there's only that one level there. There's some other knobs and so forth, but again, I, I didn't really want to sit down and try to figure all that out when I can simply just plug my board into that one input into their board and just use their board or their, their connection as a conduit between my board and the main system there. Now, the second reason, and this kind of falls into the same reason here is, I have, I feel like I have complete control when using my board. I already know where my levels are or where they need to be for the mix, uh, for my mic, for my guitar, because everything is just set up. It's always the same. My EQ is always the same. Uh, pretty much every venue is the same. All right. I might make some tweaks to the EQ depending on the type of venue, but again, I'm going back to number one. I'm familiar with my board. Uh, actually, there's a third reason as well you might need more inputs than what their board has. And in this case, and in pretty much every case, anywhere I've played at or I play at on a regular basis that has their own system, uh, I need one more input than what they have because my wife also sings with me on a few of the songs. Actually, she's now singing with probably uh, on a fourth of the songs that I play live. So I need my mic, I need an input for my guitar, uh, she needs a mic as well. So there's even another mic stand and mic that I need to make sure that I bring. I'm not gonna assume that they're going to have it. Now, things like your own guitar effects, your vocal effects and that sort of thing, that's kind of a no-brainer. I recommend that you bring that. Uh, you may have some limitations if you're just using their board with connecting effects, like what if maybe you have, uh, like I play acoustic and electric. Fortunately, I use the same effects processor for both, but you might have an acoustic amp or a acoustic you know, DI that you play through, and you might switch over to electric for a couple songs. You might be playing through an amp or some other processor, so well, there's another input that you need, and this goes back to why you should bring your own board, because you're gonna be familiar with that, and you're gonna have all of the inputs that you need to do what you do. I could almost end the video right here, but there's actually one more piece of gear that I want you to consider bringing. So we, we've got the cables, we've got the stands, right? We've got all that stuff. And, and those are just kind of preliminary items that you need to bring. Obviously your effects for if you have different effects for vocals or if you're used to using your, your board effects, your onboard effects, you know, their system may or may not have the effects that you want to use. Uh, or if they do have effects, well, again, it's something else that you kind of have to learn. Whereas if you have your own board, and I know I'm harping on the board, guys, but I, I really think that's going to save you a lot of frustration. So bring your board. Now, another important item, and this is kind of a backup plan here, okay? You always hope for the best, but plan for the worst. And I don't want you to miss a gig and then miss getting paid for that gig because you didn't bring a backup of something you didn't have a, a you know a fail plan, right? You didn't have a plan for if things went wrong or were out of your control. So I always pack one of my speakers. Okay, I always pack one of my speakers in my car. I've got my uh, my Electro Voice here in the trunk. I brought that with me just in case. Now chances are 
everything's going to be fine. But in that one in a million chance or whatever that odd is that something happens to their sound system, there's a short right before you get there or something happened to it and you don't know until you go to turn it on or just something goes wrong, at least you can continue if you have that speaker. I can get by with one speaker and most venues, you know, we, we can get by with just one speaker. I don't necessarily want you to bring your entire setup. Of course, that's not a bad idea, okay? Uh, there might be some venues where maybe you don't like their setup at all, okay? And if they're okay with you setting everything up, then hey, you might want to do that. You might prefer that. Uh, the system at the Blind Goat here, this was perfect because it sounded really, really good and I was set up in 20 minutes. They had everything that I needed. I just connected my board and hooked up all my stuff and I was ready so it, it was really uh, it was really a good experience but I have played at other gigs where it was like okay I'm playing through the system but I don't know it just didn't sound as good as what I have you know and maybe that's going into the EQ and settings but again you know it goes back to you're not familiar with that system and when you get to a gig I mean you're showing up already probably an hour and a half early to set up and make sure things are, are okay uh, you don't necessarily have time to learn a new system, okay? So that's just my advice there. Bring that backup speaker though, just in case everything just goes to poop, which that probably won't happen, but if it does, you're not out for that gig for that evening or that night, okay? So bring that extra speaker. Now, some of you may bring all your equipment anyway, and I actually thought about that, but I'm like, well, that kind of defeats the purpose of enjoying the fact that some of these venues have their own sound system. I want to enjoy that. So again, you know, if, if at least you bring one speaker in case everything just went haywire, then you're good, okay? If you don't bring anything at all and there's just a major issue, then, well, you've got to either go back home and get your speaker, which you're probably going to be late to the gig, or you forfeit the gig for that night. All right, so I'm gonna share just a little bit of live footage that I took from this gig here. Uh, I'm gonna warn you my sound quality. I filmed this on my phone and <laughs> the sound quality is not that good. This place was pretty busy that night. Thank goodness, I, I like a busy bar, it's just good. A lot of folks are singing along and that sort of thing. So I had a blast at this place. By the way, to the owners of the Blind Goat and the managers and everyone who works there, uh, thank you guys so much for having me. Um, if you live in the Tampa area, I'm actually booked out for the rest of the year, 2022, so I'm very grateful for that. This is an awesome, awesome, awesome place. Uh, if you're in the local area, the Tampa Brandon area, follow me on my Facebook and also also save my website in your, uh, in your favorites. Uh, those links are in the description of this video. I'm always posting my updates to upcoming gigs and that sort of thing on Facebook, also on Instagram, and I keep the schedule on my homepage of my website, jasonstallworth.com as well. So uh, if you're local, definitely check that out. All right, so here is some live footage for you. Again, the sound quality is not that great, so I'm just gonna share probably a couple minutes here. Uh, just gonna share it anyway. I was thinking about maybe I shouldn't, but eh. All right, here's a few songs for you. <laughs>
Thank you guys, we'll see you uh, next time.